This week has been a hell of a month. We got a lot of more stuff to go over here. A lot of news befalling the Vikings. We'll go over all of that, but worry not. We still got a Chargers game coming up, and come hell or high water, that game's getting played. So we are going to talk about it with David Drogemeyer of Locked On Chargers, because it's crossover Thursday. Don't think I forgot here on the Locked On Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ooh, it's going to be a day, huh? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Dick, as always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. Shows on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. And this episode of Locked On Vikings is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thanks to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Today is crossover Thursday, so we are talking to Locked On Chargers. Got David coming on the show soon, but first, we have a torrent of stuff to talk about. You may have woken up on Wednesday. If you went to bed early on Tuesday night, you may have woken up to a whole Dalvin Cook situation. Go listen to yesterday's show for detail on that. Um, there isn't all that much more that we know. Uh, just what you can read in the complaint, which is public information, what you can read in the lawyer's statement from uh, Dalvin Cook's people. There's also a statement from Cook's agent, uh, Zach Hiller, that you should probably check his, it's on his Twitter. There's all, all kinds of information. Go compile it, come to your own conclusions. Um, we talked about that yesterday, though. Uh, basically, where, we're, where we are at right now is um, Dalvin Cook is going to play. He actually went up in front of the media. He said, he reiterated, I'm the victim in this. You know, he basically said, I'm innocent. The facts will come to light. Everybody wait and see. Um, so I guess there's that part of the story. Um, the complaint itself is pretty disturbing, if true, big if, uh, but we have to kind of take it all as it comes and, and, and wait for the rest of the information to come out like everybody has promised us that it will. Uh, elsewhere in Vikings news, boy, we aren't done yet, are we? Uh, there was a report, I believe it came from Darren Wolfson, um, and I think other people have kind of confirmed this with their sources. I'm sorry if I got who got it first wrong, but the reports are Michael Pierce's injury is, uh, still going to be a while. So that elbow injury is still pretty rough. They tried it last week. Um, it, they tried to practice him once he had a setback, so they probably pushed him a little bit too early there. That's really tough. This seems like one of those injuries where it's like hard to gauge. And he says, I'm feeling great. You go out and practice, tweak something again. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say the T word. Uh, you know, he, he messes something up again and you have to go back on ice for a while. So Michael Pierce, I would call him doubtful for this game against the Chargers. And, uh, you know, we'll have to just see week to week. A lot of people have said, well, why wasn't he put on IR? And I think... It, it feels like a lot of people think that the Vikings knew how bad the injury was and were keeping it secret. And now that it's revealed, it's like dumb that they didn't put it on IR. That should tell you something, right? That the team didn't put them on IR. And, and that something shouldn't be, ah, the team was uh, dumb and forgot that IR was three weeks. No, it meant they didn't think this was going to be this long of an injury. And then it turned out to be worse than they thought. This kind of thing is difficult to gauge on the fly unless you're opening the thing up and looking at it, right? All you kind of have to go on is how the player says he feels. So, I mean, that's the case with a lot of these injuries. So they just have to keep taking it week by week. Yeah, they could have put him on IR, you know, four weeks ago and saved a roster spot for a while. But honestly, they are operating under the roster anyways because everybody's on COVID IR, which brings me to the next thing, all the COVID problems. So uh, the Vikings are having a COVID moment here. Right now they have five players on COVID IR. Mike Zimmer also divulged that a player actually had to go to the hospital with problems breathing. He's okay and he's stable, but he's still recovering in the hospital. Um, I believe it was Courtney Cronin uh, did some digging and found that that player was Dakota Dozier, who was on the COVID IR list for a while. Um, and Dakota Dozier is vaccinated. The, I'm going to assume it's the Delta variant because the Delta variant is the most common COVID strain uh, that's especially for uh, vaccinated like break, breakthrough cases. Um, yeah, it's serious stuff. It's really rough. Uh, so that is pretty scary. Glad Dakota Dozier's okay. Um, and Mike Zimmer also divulged that 29 people were in the close contact protocol. Now, the close contact protocol is different if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated. If you're unvaccinated, you go on COVID IR. Nobody's been put on COVID IR uh, that I understand right now. 
So, or at least as of this recording, this is kind of a moment by moment thing. You listening to this in the future might have more information than I do. Uh, but if you are vaccinated, you still have, and you, and you come into close contact with somebody who has COVID, you still have to test. So Zimmer himself tested, I believe Andre Patterson tested, um, probably tested negative since they were talking about it in the media. Uh, but you know, everybody had to go through all those tests. So that's not 29 people on COVID IR. That's 29 people who had a close contact and had to go test 29 vaccinated people. Um, but you know, keep an eye on it. These kinds of things can happen. So there's a lot going on and it seems like, you know, there's like a ton of stuff that is just simply doing the Vikings. But the thing about the NFL is that the show always goes on, whether you're ready for it to or not. And sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes that can kind of make you move on. It, it's really easy to want to just sort of shut down, fold in and stop watching or, or you know, sim the season. Right. But the game's going to happen whether you're ready for it or not. And sometimes that can be more of a blessing than a curse. It just makes you resilient because that's the only way to survive. So we are now going to go into the conversation with Locked on Chargers. Before we get into that, however, uh, I want to talk to you about Mickey D. No, before we get into that, however, a big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for sponsoring this episode of Locked on Vikings. We all have lovely memories of time, our time at Mickey D's, whether it was your favorite place to go as a kid, you know, a treat if your parents got, let you have Mickey D's for dinner, or uh, somewhere you would stop off at a road trip, stretch your legs, get a bite to eat, something tasty and affordable, but also you're making memories. For me, it was a big tradition in high school. Uh, you know, after school, we would all go out, get a bunch of Mickey D's, we'd sit down, do homework. That was a big thing. So and that's always kind of the memory associated. Whatever it is, it's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect over delicious food. Thank you so much to our pals at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. I also want to talk to you about my new favorite app. It's GetUpside. GetUpside is an app that can save you money at the pump, up to 25 cents off per gallon at the pump. And if you drive around a lot, that adds up. That's like two, 300 bucks. Just go, go to the Google Play Store, App Store, whichever your phone has. Get the GetUpside app. That is a free app. Sign up. And it will tell you gas stations around you that are participating that you can go and save money. And when you sign up, you can enter promo code TOUCHDOWN and your first fill up will be an additional 25 cents per gallon off. So up to 50 cents per gallon off for using the GetUpside app and promo code TOUCHDOWN. Just go fill up, tell them which gas station you went to. It'll process for a day or two and then the money's in your account. You can cash out however you want. Amazon gift cards or just like PayPal direct deposit right into your bank if you don't want to mess with any of that stuff. So go to the Get Upside app, use promo code TOUCHDOWN for up to 50 cents off on your first fill up per gallon. Once again, that's promo code TOUCHDOWN at the Get Upside app. All right, two teams here that don't really get to see each other very often. And so this is going to be a very interesting matchup. But first, before we get into it, thank you guys for making us your first listen of the day. And also, this episode is of Locked On Chargers and Locked On Vikings is brought to you by McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It is an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Luke Braun, uh, it's been a while, man, since we've been able to yeah, get on here and, years. And, and do a, a crossover. Uh, I've always enjoyed this. You've always been one of my favorite hosts. Uh, you're hilarious. <laughs> and uh, you, you always man. put your takes out there. And, you know, we like to, you know, kind of throw jabs back and forth at each other on Twitter. Which is, is very fun. But how's this? How's the year been for you? How's everything going? Oh, okay. help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, it's been the year from hell. The Vikings do one of these every few years where they'll the, the roof will, will collapse literally or metaphorically. Um, they do. They're just in one of those years, I guess, where everything kind of hits the fan right now. They're having a big COVID problem. There's the Dalvin Cook thing. We'll get into that. That's the thing happening right now. Um, you know, vac from vaccination status drama in August all the way through injuries and everything. It's always a thing. Always something around the corner. <laughs> yeah, geez. Speaking of injuries, that's the first thing that we're going to talk about here in segment one. We're going to talk about the injuries for both teams, kind of what, what's been happening during the season. And, uh, of course, putting a little bit more of a spotlight and a focus on this game on Sunday. And then we'll get into uh, some questions about the Vikings. And then we'll close things out with some questions about the Chargers. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. So 
As far as, you know, the Vikings injury so far this season, Luke, I mean, what does that kind of look like just from a, a macro perspective? Yeah, well, f- so the Vikings were really, really excited going into the season about Irv Smith Jr., their tight end. Um, he gets injured out f- in an out for the season way. He has a, a meniscus tear, I believe it was. That's so um, pre- in the last game of preseason, he plays like seven snaps, blows out his knee, sucks. So yeah. he's out for the year. Daniil Hunter tears his pec. He's out for the year. So they've lost some people. Anthony Barr, who's also kind of a key cog in the off or in the defense, has kind of been, we'll call it week to week. Uh, with a tendonitis issue in his knee. So it's something that kind of, he's just playing as many games as he can through. So he's going to be on every injury report limited. Played last yeah. week, played the week uh, the week before. So we'll probably still have him, um, but it's always something to monitor. Um, importantly for this game, safety Harrison Smith on the COVID protocol. And the Vikings are having some COVID issues as well. Their center, Garrett Bradbury, um, is vaccinated. And so as soon as he's asymptomatic, has a couple of uh, negative tests in a row, he can come back. But we're kind of watching for that because he was a symptomatic case like he's actually sick so that could still last through the chargers game we'll kind of see um the vikings have i think five players on the covid19 list right now so they are kind of dealing with a covid thing um as well as a couple of injury deals also michael pierce has an elbow injury um he's a very very important part of their run defense they have been without him for many weeks without this elbow injury i would put him as doubtful right now it's not out of the the cards for him to play in this game um, but I certainly wouldn't hang, hang my hat on it. A few other little nicks and bumps on the injury report list. The secondary is a little banged up, but right now all of those guys were limited. So, uh, yeah, the only two true DNPs are Anthony Barr and Michael Pierce and everybody on COVID or IR. Gotcha. As far as the Chargers con- are concerned, they're going to be without their number one corner again in this game. Michael Davis is still, uh, according to Br- head coach Brandon Staley, about a week away. Um, so he's going to miss this game, unfortunately. Nazir Adderley, their, their free safety, a mispractice today, uh, just because coach said that he was sore. And Brandon Staley is very big about getting his players to Sunday. So if they need to rest them during the week, he's going to do that um, because he wants all of his players on sure. Sunday as Play healthy when it as they possibly can be. And Justin Jackson, their uh, second string running back, uh, who has dealt with injuries his entire NFL career, unfortunately, uh, also mispracticed with a quad injury. Uh, uh, I think the biggest name to talk about is probably Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray, their linebacker, is scheduled to, to come back off of IR, and they're kind of switching his role up a little bit. They're going to turn him into more of a hybrid linebacker. Um, Brandon Staley specifically mentioned a Dante Hightower type, you know, where he's going to come off the edge a little okay. bit. He's going to be a little Anthony bit Bartek. more of an inside linebacker. Yeah, and, and I think that's personally better usage of Kenneth Murray's talent because – He's more of a read and react type of, you know, run sideline to sideline type of, of uh, linebacker. And he does have ability to get after the passer. So I, I am welcoming that as the this is the Chargers team who, outside of Joey Bosa, does not do a very good job of getting after the quarterback. Hey, all we'll be back with David in just a second. But first, let me talk to you about Gramlin. This Vikings Chargers game is Vikings minus for plus three. Vikings are three point underdogs in this game. If you want to bet on that or bet on anything else, prop bets, live betting, they just redesigned their whole website. Go check it out. BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is the best place for sports grambling and other kinds of grambling too. You can bet on uh, football, you can bet on basketball, hockey, whatever is going on, pro, college, MMA, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. My favorite is the live betting apparatus. Makes it really fun. You watch a primetime game, you feel it out for the first quarter, and then see if you can't figure out where the game is headed better than the market can. It's a really fun game for me. So head on over to betonline.ag. Use promo code locked on L O C K E D O N. When you sign up and make your first deposit, you get a 50% welcome bonus for whatever you put in for your first deposit. Bet online just matches half of that dumps that money straight into your account as free play money. That's betonline.ag promo code locked on all one word for a 50% welcome bonus bet online where the game starts. So, Going to talk to you about the Chargers a little bit here. Um, they seem to still have that cardiac gene that the Chargers have had since the dawning of time. Uh, um, yeah. But they're winning these games now. This is what I want to know. What's different? Is this a Brandon Staley thing? Is this a maturity thing? Is this Justin Herbert overcoming what Philip Rivers could never un- overcome? I mean, what, what's what? How are they getting over this hump? They're not chargering like they used to charger. It, it has everything to do with Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley's aggressive mindset, um, his analytically driven decision making, he has been phenomenal. The Chargers are uber, and I mean uber aggressive on fourth downs. It doesn't matter where they're at on the field. If it's a short, 
a fourth and short situation, say fourth and four or five or less, chances are very strong that the Chargers are going to believe in their offense and they are going to send them back out there and go to get a first down. They want to keep the ball. They want to drain the clock and they want to end the game with the ball in their hands on their terms. That is Brandon Staley through and through. It has been a beautiful breath of fresh air and there really is no other way to describe it other than Brandon Staley is the man. Nice. And so Andre Patterson, defensive coordinator for the Vikings, he kind of talked about it's really, really important to get after Justin Herbert to get the you know oh, yeah. pressure on him and, and get there. Last year, by a study that I did uh, revolving around like quarterbacks under pressure because it was a Kirk Cousins thing, yeah. Justin Herbert ranked number one best yeah. pressure eraser in the league. Is that still the case? Is he is he keeping up on that? I mean, is he able to kind of elude whenever the offensive line can't quite hold up? Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I think that's where Justin Herbert is really at his best. And and they really designed that uh, in the last game. <laughs> uh, excuse me. And it was very, very important to the game plan against the Eagles. They were moving the pocket. They were getting Justin Herbert out intentionally, using rollouts, uh, using bootlegs, using the play action. And it was, it was working to perfection. And that's because Justin Herbert can make any throw on the field. He can throw on the run accurately, and he's a very sound decision maker, and he can escape the rush. So that does make him very, very dangerous. Um, And that's not really been what teams have tried to do to stop Justin Herbert. If you look at the Patriots game, if you look at the Ravens game, what they did is they tried to change the sight picture after the snap. They would show one thing, they would show pressure, they would show coverage, and then they would change that sight picture after the ball was snapped, and they were trying to force Justin Herbert to read that very quickly and make the right decision. And that's something that Justin Herbert, dating back to his rookie year, struggled and still struggles with a little bit. But the thing with Justin Herbert is he's incredibly intelligent, and he is a quarterback that when he does make mistakes, he does show a propensity to correct those mistakes and move forward. Yeah, that young player growth. That's interesting. Mike Zimmer is famous. Like, that's his claim to fame is his disguises of the look, the front, the coverage, everything. You know, he doesn't just roll the safeties. He rolls the safeties with the linebackers, with the corners. Everything in the alignment is designed to throw you off the scent uh, in a way that, you know, uh, like a lot of times they'll just kind of like show you too high and then a safety comes down and you're like, "Eh, yeah, that didn't really buy it in the first place. Um, But yeah, that. That, that that's the the big Zimmer thing. Yeah. Um, so I guess defensively, if, you know, game on the line, overtime drive, let's say, so a neutral situation, yeah. you're a Chargers fan, what do you not want the Vikings to do? What would you see the Vikings do and go, ha ha, they're dumb, they're playing right into our teeth? Throw the ball, uh, I, honestly. I, I think the Chargers, if you look at their passing stats uh, against the pass this year, they're giving up just over 200 yards a game or, or right around that that mark. So they're much better against the pass. They do deploy the two safety look. Brandon Staley talks all the time about keeping a roof over the defense and not allowing not allowing those explosives, those explosive plays. They don't want that. They don't want that in the running game. They definitely don't want that in the passing game. Hmm. The, the weakness of this team is very, very clear. It's the run defense and it's run right up the middle. The Chargers are giving up 150, 160 yards a game because they – just don't have the personnel to execute the run fits that Brandon Staley wants to. And the past two games, they've got better, uh, but they're still very, very bad and very, very susceptible to the run. Gotcha. One last question. Um, It's interesting. The Vikings run game has had all kinds of problems, so we might have a stoppable force, movable object thing going on here. Uh, who, who don't I know about that I should know about on the Chargers? I, I'm an NFC team here. I don't follow sure. them that closely. Who's right. who's under my radar that shouldn't be? Yeah, so, I mean, on, on offense, I, I think it's a couple of the tight ends. Uh, I mean, you know who Jared Cook is. Jared Cook's been in the league for, you know, forever, you know, 15 years or whatever it is. He's still reliable, still, still got great hands, but the two other receiving tight ends that the Chargers deploy are very dangerous. And, the, and for Pride very of the different... XFL. Yeah, very different reasons. And Donald Parham is who you yeah. are alluding to. He's a roughnecks legend, yeah? Yes, yes. He's a giant. He's a skyscraper. He is six foot eight and has a ridiculous catch radius. He's also incredibly agile for a man of his size. He's hard to bring down. He shows deceptive quickness for, like I said, a guy who's literally an ent, a, a walking tree. The, the guy is just incredibly large. And 
The Chargers are starting to use him in those situations you would expect a six foot eight tight end to be deployed on those third down situations in the red zone. They want to get the ball to him and let him do the rest. And then Steven Anderson, who is a blocking tight end, he's a ferocious blocker, but they're using that to their advantage because mentally you think, okay, Steven Anderson's in the game. They're about to run because he is a, a very, very good run blocker, but he is a deceptively good pass catcher as well. And the chargers are really trying to set up those looks with Steven Anderson, where he's going to be out there 15, 30, 15, 25 times run blocking. But then you're going to get those five or six times where they play action to it, throw it to him. And he does good things with the ball after the catch. So those are two players I would say on the offensive side that Vikings fans should pay attention to going into this game. So maybe fittingly, this game is Chargers favored by exactly a field goal. Yeah. Uh, you and I, we've had our problems with kickers. We've we've got stories we could exchange by the bar for hours. Too many. Sit in the, the deck of the boat in Jaws and tell horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> it would be worse than the shark. Is this coming down to a field goal? Is the three is the three point line right? What's your prediction? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I'm not going to put a score on it right now because I still have to go out there and watch my you know watch fa- film on the Vikings and get my own feel for it. But just looking at the trajectory of these two teams and their seasons, uh, that's what it's been. The, the Chargers are tough, um, and they are definitely going to keep things close. I think they have got something figured out in the special teams area. They had a lot of issues with that early on in the season. They're starting to get some more explosive. Uh, plays in the special teams area, you know, better returns on punt returns and kick returns. So that aspect is starting to come alive a little bit, which is nice because their special teams was literally historically bad last year. Um, But yes, I I think just looking at these two teams, they're both very competitive. They're going to keep it close because they do have talent. It's just going to come down to who is going to have the ball and who's going to execute at the very end of the game. And I mean, if you look at these two teams, you probably have a little bit more faith that the Chargers are going to be able to do that. Yeah, I I think the betting mark is too high on the Vikings right now. They have a lot of crap to get together, and I can't pick them in a game until they do. So I'm just going to keep picking against them until they prove to me that they can be a a real boy team made out of adults. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Either way, this is going to be a, a very exciting game. It's going to be a close game, you know. Keep keep your stress relievers close. I mean, because your yeah. blood pressure is going to go up watching this game. Yeah. There is no doubt about it, but it should be entertaining. It is going to be one of those games you don't get to see often. So I'm looking forward to it watching this one on Sunday. And I'll have to crack a Golden Road Brew or two. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's a, it's a joke for the Angelinos. <laughs> hey, David, thank you so much for uh, thanks. Thanks so much for, for coming and chatting Chargers Vikings with me. Enjoy the game, man. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. We'll talk again soon. As always, we're going to dig into some of the stuff David said in this. Uh, If there's some things I want to investigate, some interesting ideas, we're going to look at the Chargers and uh, see if we can't get a handle on who the Chargers are and how the Vikings can go approach and attack them. Look, if they win this game and they claw back to four and five, the NFC is weak and kind of wide open. If you can get in the dance, maybe upset one of the good upper tier uh, NFC teams. I mean, we know the Vikings can make just about any game within a score, right? Let's get in the dance and see what happens. So... We're going to see if the Vikings can't figure out a way to beat the Chargers despite everything going on off the field. And we'll try to focus on the X's and O's in a little bit. Let sports be the distraction it must be for us. So I hope you join me for that journey. For your second listen of the day, check out the Peacock and Williamson podcast. They're talking about everything on the national angle. I will see you all tomorrow for some Chargers talk. And as always, skull.